Happy New Year. Uh, blessed 2022 for you and all that concerns you in Jesus' name. Uh, let's share a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for the word. I thank you for utterance and the grace for spiritual understanding and the grace for spiritual application. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm continuing a series I started in December called, um, which was based on understanding the necessity of the Christ. In other words, why do we need Christ? Why do we need Jesus Christ? Um, just a, a series on many different aspects of, of, of or many different um, teachings that will come together and play like a, be like a story of, of, of this man to help under, to help us understand, excuse me, why do we need Jesus Christ? What is the necessity of Jesus Christ? And this is the second teaching. The first teaching I did kind of just an introduction. Yeah. This second teaching, I want to discuss uh, what did Jesus come to do? Right? So the series is about uh, the necessity of the Christ. But in this specific teaching, I want to discuss what did he come to do? What did he come to do? We're going to begin to take our first scripture from the book of Genesis chapter 1 and at verse 26. Now, what was happening here is that God and in his triune nature, which means that he is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That he is one God, but he exists in three persons. Similar to uh, somebody who know, you know that can be... Uh, they're one individual, but they play many different roles to different people. They're a father to one, a teacher to one, a coach to one, a friend to another, a, br a brother to another, uh, and all these different things. So God is God, but he is God the Father, he is God the Son, and he is God the Holy Spirit. One God and three different persons. This is not really the essence of this teaching. We just want to clarify that. And so when he was creating... The earth, he sat down within himself with that triune nature. Excuse me, I began to discuss uh, the proceedings of how they're going to create the world. And he said, and God said, let us, which means Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness. So they're discussing now creating a being that would have their image and likeness. Now these two Hebrew words, uh, image and likeness, are signifying he wants this being to look like him and to function like him in other words that when you see a man he wants man to be a perfect representation of who he is like how if I sow a seed of a fruit when that seed matures into a mature fruit it will look like the fruit uh, of the seed the fruit from which I took the seed from. So if I get a watermelon seed and sow a watermelon seed, I'll get a watermelon. So he wants mankind to be his seed. That when he sows man into the earth, when you look at a man, you'll see God in, in his fullness. Um, so he said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And, uh, and so what this begins to establish here is that he wants to make mankind uh, an ambassador. An ambassador, which is a representative, because if, he, if mankind is going to look like God, uh, God's idea was that mankind was going to represent him. Now, an ambassador is an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. So, so in 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 uh, uh, politics, I can say an ambassador would be someone who is sent from country A to country B to represent country A to country B. So that country B would know country A's customs. And so like the ambassador of the United States can go to Syria to represent the United States and to make known our customs and our way of doing things and, and our lifestyle, whatever the case may be. So they're a representative. So mankind is number one, an ambassador of God. This is important if we're going to understand why Jesus came. Mankind is ambassador or representative of God. He continues to say, um, and this is Hebrews chapter 1 and one and 3. He says, going through a long line of prophets. A scripture to support this is uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. But we're just going to read a small portion. It says, uh, the Son, which is speaking of Jesus Christ, perfectly mirrors God and is stamped with God's nature. So what does this mean? That when God created man, man was to be God's mirror. So the same way when you look at yourself in a mirror, you see an exact representation of yourself. 
Are you seeing that? So when you, when, when, uh, you see man, it should be a mirror of God, that it should be an exact representation of who God is in thinking and, and in behavior. Are you seeing another scripture to support it is Psalms chapter 82 and verse 6. He says, I said, and this is God speaking. He said, I said, you are God's since you judge on my behalf as my representative. So there's a place where God now begins to call them, call man by his own name since that they represent him. So he's not ashamed of calling man by his own name since they uh, judge on his behalf and they represent so him. Remember I spoke before about the Trinity coming together to decide how they wanted to create the world and how they wanted to create man. Uh, this is the completion of what God was saying. He says, and let mankind have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. You see, so he's saying that everything that I have created as God, I want mankind to have authority over it. What does it mean to have authority? That they're the ones that get to decide what happens to these things. They're the kings of this land. They own this land. Like how a parent has the authority in the home. They get to decide how things operate. They get to decide uh, what time the kids go to sleep and all these different. They get to decide how the house functions and how the house is ran. But it also comes with a responsibility because you have to pay the bills and keep lights on and keep food on the table and all these different things. For to whom much is given, the Bible says the much is uh, much is required. Excuse me, and so he wants to make mankind a, a manager of his creation. He says in Psalms chapter one fifteen and verse sixteen, the heavens, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth has He given to the children of men. So God has given heaven to His own possession, that He will be the author the authority in heaven and decide how things in heaven uh, heaven operate. Excuse me. But as far as earth is concerned, he gave it to mankind. What does that mean? God will determine how heaven functions. But as far as earth is concerned, he'll give that jurisdiction to mankind. So he says the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's. They're his to operate, his to function, his to judge. But he says the earth has he given to the children of men. In other words, men. He's given the earth to men. Psalms chapter 8 verse 5 and 6 he says you have made man a little lower than God and you have crowned him with glory and honor he says you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands and you have put all things under his feet so everything God created he made mankind to have dominion over it are you seeing that on earth so on he earth. wants mankind to firstly be his ambassador or representative to represent him that when you see a man you see God that as God is righteous, man is righteous. That as God is holy, man is holy. The Bible says, be ye therefore holy, for I am holy. That if God is love, mankind should love. That if God is just, mankind should be just. So everything that God is, he wants mankind to be. That's an ambassador, a representative, like a mirror. When he looks into mankind, he wants to see a mirror of himself. Firstly, he is an ambassador. Secondly, man is a manager of God's property or a governor. He, again, he says in... Uh, no, we'll skip that. So again, ambassador and then a governor of God's uh, property, all that God owns. Now, here, from this stage proceeding, after God had laid down all these different things and, and his plan for mankind, um, he began to introduce to mankind the, the law of free will in that God has to give mankind the option of either choosing to obey him or obeying another entity. It can even be themselves. And so um, God can never, one thing you must understand about God, God cannot force people to love him or force people to obey him. Mankind has to choose. And so what happened after that God had already made it clear to them that he wants to make mankind or he spoke these things that he wants to make mankind in his image and likeness in that he wants mankind to represent him and to and to uh, manage all that he is um, uh, created. Now I have to add another thing about ambassadorship that if uh, if mankind is going to be uh, um, an efficient ambassador 
that man has to be under the government of God. If I'm going to go from country A and country A's government and represent it to country B and country B's government, I have to myself be under that government. Because how can I represent a government that I'm not submitted to? You see, it's like trying to represent somebody you don't know. You see, so if mankind is going to be an ambassador of God, they have to submit to God. What does that mean? It means they have to obey God. Are you seeing? Because if, again, if they're going to represent him and his uh, his pattern of, of, of living and how God functions, they have to be submitted to it. Because mankind were created like how babies go are they're created ignorant and they have to learn through time. So mankind had to go through a process of learning God and learning his ways and learning how he does the things he does so we can be conformed to his image and look like him and see. And so again, we have to submit to his government, submit to his rulership. You see, if we're going to rule the earth, he has to rule us because he wants us to rule the earth as ambassadors as well, not just rule the earth in our own way. We'll begin to discuss a few of these things down the line. He wants us to rule the earth as far as we are ruled by him. So it's that we are kings under a king. As the Bible says, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So when he said he wants mankind to have dominion over all the earth, he also wants to have dominion over mankind. So it's God, then mankind, then the earth. And he wants it to be in that order because, again, he wants mankind to represent him. You can't represent him if you're disobedient to him. Because if you represent him, it means you're like him. And if you're like him, you have to agree with him. And if you agree with him, you have to listen to him. So when he says, this is righteous and this is unrighteous, for me to represent that mindset, I would have to agree with that idea. You see, for me to disagree with that idea, it would me be it would be me misrepresenting him. You see, if someone likes cheese and I wanted to go somewhere and be that a perfect expression of who that person is, and I don't like cheese, I've just misrepresented him. You see, so it, the way God works is that um, by you obeying him, you begin to represent him because you begin to function how you function. So just say, I there's my friend here who loves cheese with all of his heart and I want to tell people about, or I, not even tell people, but I want to show people who he is. I, it's a silly example, but just for understanding. I want to show people who he is by my actions. And say if I they try to give me cheese and I say I hate cheese, I didn't represent him because that's not him. See, so say that friend gave me a, a command. Uh, love cheese because I love cheese you see because because I love cheese you should love cheese because I want you to represent me if I go over to that other place and I don't love cheese I'm not representing them adequately are you seeing so if for us to be I talked about ambassadorship but I had to explain something more to, to help us understand this next point I want to make is that as a representative of God we have to be under God's government you see what is God's government God's government is God's pattern What's God's pattern? God's pattern is God's way of doing things. We have to do things the way he does them to represent him. Because representing him is looking like him. And to look like him, we have to do things the way he does them. Are you understanding that? So that's the first goal. He wants man to be an ambassador, a representative, and then secondly, a manager of God's property. Now, the next phase of this teaching, we're going to discuss the law of free will and the fall of mankind. And here we're going to discuss a few things. Uh, firstly, um, God had to, from this stage, now give man the choice. You see, now they can choose if they will live under God's government or God's pattern or God's way of doing things or do things their own way. So they have they have a choice. It's like red pill, blue pill. They can because God wants them to be ambassadors. He wants them to look like him. He wants them to do things the way he does them. But now he gives them a choice. They can either do the way, do things the way he wants them to do them, or he, they can do things the way they want to do it. Why does God give mankind that choice? Because any love that's genuine is not a forced love. Any, because he says, if, you, if any man loves me, he'll obey my commandments. Obedience is a product of love. And God wants man to love him genuinely, not of not out of coercion, not out of force. Because we're not robots. He wants mankind to love him because we chose to love him. And so he has to give us a choice. He has to give us red pill, blue pill. You see? So we can either choose from this point now to do things God's way or do things our way. 
And this is where the uh, serpent came in. Because the serpent understood this spiritual law, he came in and began to coerce mankind. Oh, you can become your own gods. In other words, you can you can do things your own way. He began to market a new culture where I, I don't have to listen to God. I can live my own sort of lifestyle, you see? And to, to justify this uh, uh, point, I'm going to look, look at a few scriptures. He says in Deuteronomy chapter 11 and 26, he says, Behold, this is God speaking. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse if you do not obey. And in Jeremiah 21 verse 8, he says, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. You see the idea where that God never gives you one option. He'll give you what he wants you to do, but you always have the option to disobey because he can't force you. So he told you firstly here that, I, 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 I lay before you today a blessing and a curse. So you can choose the blessing I'm giving you by obeying me or choose the curse by disobeying me. And in the second scripture, he says, I lay before you the way of life and the way of death. So you can either choose to go the way of life that I want you to go in or go the way of death that you would desire to go in. So God always, he's never going to force you to go in one way. There's always a second option because he has to give you free will because he wants you to choose him because you genuinely love him not because it's because if it's the only option it, it it's not necessarily real love because i had to choose this way i didn't have another choice you see so it's like a red pill blue pill either live by god's way of doing things or live by our own way of doing things and of course as we know as, as i've taught before mankind failed and decided to try to do things their own way uh, satan deceived him and made them think that a man can actually function outside of God. A man can actually live life their own way. Because when God gives you that option, he's going to tell you, he told Adam and Eve, if you eat this fruit, you'll die. So it's not like he won't tell you what will happen if you don't obey me. He'll tell you, but you can still choose. He'll, if you eat this fruit, you'll die. He'll tell you if you disobey me, you'll die. But we still have choice. And we chose to eat the fruit and we died. You see? Um, and so what happened as a result of that disobedience Earlier, I told you that God wanted mankind to be an ambassador of himself, someone who represents him and looks like him. So when mankind ate the fruit, that plan failed. Because now, because Satan came to deceive man, what happened is that because mankind obeys Satan, Satan became what God was supposed to be to mankind. Because instead of, because mankind can either choose to obey God or obey Satan. I, you know how I told you that mankind would either choose to do it God's way or their way? That's actually true to a degree. Because when I say mankind is going to do things their way, that's just the way that Satan marketed, marketed it, marketed it, what? Marketed to them that they would actually begin to live the life their own way, which actually is not true. Because you'll, you'll learn in scripture that is Satan is actually the God of this world. And I'm, I'm skipping ahead, but... Um, Satan made Adam and Eve think that if they disobey God, they don't have to uh, be servants to God's kingdom. They can begin to build their own kingdom. And that was the deception because it's actually not true. The truth is that you'll actually either be subject to God or be subject to Satan. There's no in the middle. There's no, oh, I, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the uh, king of my own life. It's not true. It's not true. Um, uh, the spiritual realm is superior to the natural realm. The spiritual realm is the mother of the natural realm. Uh, it's, it's, it's the Bible says we battle not against flesh and blood. And so it's not men that are really ruling the earth. Uh, it's spirits. Spirits. The spirits. Um, so men don't actually rule the world. As much as we make it seem like we do or we think we do, uh, it's because there are unseen realities going about in, in dark places and behind the scenes that we don't see with our our, our, our natural eye, but it doesn't mean it's not real. You see, and so mankind became ambassadors of Satan. What does that mean? Instead of looking like God, we began to look like Satan because we began to submit ourselves and obey Satan. And I told you, when God wanted to mankind to become ambassadors, that can only happen if they began to do things his way because they can only look like God if they do things the way God does them. So when we began to listen to Satan, we began to do things the way he does things, right? He became the 
God, as the Bible says, of this world. He became the father of mankind. Why? Because in the, in the Bible, fatherhood is not just giving birth to a child. If fatherhood is uh, whoever is responsible for the, the manner of lifestyle you live. So God was supposed to be the father of mankind, but Satan became the father of mankind. So because instead of mankind doing things the way God wants them to be done, they began to do things the way Satan wants them to be done. You see, in John chapter 8, verse 44, he says, Jesus speaking to the Jews, he says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. You see, so he's telling them, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. But he's speaking to human beings. How can he tell human beings their, their father is Satan, who is a spirit? Because he's not talking about Satan has a wife and he slept with his wife. And he get, no, he's talking about the fact that uh, you do things the way he wants them to, way, way he wants you to do them. And so in that sense, biblically defined, he's your father. And he's not talking about the kind of fatherhood we were thinking of. He's talking about fatherhood in the sense that he is your, um, how should I say, he, he's your pattern, he's your example. He's the one you're following, I should say. He's the one you're following. So you would call him your father because the word father in the Bible means source. And so him calling you, uh, Satan their father means that Satan, uh, the devil is your source. He's the reason why you do the things you do because you're learning from him. So he tells him you are of your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire, desires. And again, Ephesians 2 and 2, he says, uh, um, in, once, in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the de desires of our body and mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. And so what's happening here is that all the men that aren't born again, Satan is working in them, and they're doing the things that Satan wants them to do. They're following his pattern. They're under the kingdom or the pattern of Satan. They're doing things the way he wants them to do. Even though Satan tried to tell mankind that if you eat this fruit, you'll become gods and you'll be able to uh, 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 live life the way you want to. It was a marketing tactic. It was a marketing tactic because they're not actually doing things they want to do with. He only told them that to make himself look like he's trying to liberate them from the slavery God wants to put them in. Because from that perspective, he makes it look like God wants to control you and rule you and be your king. I want to let you be free and do what you want to do. But it, that's not actually not what happened. What Satan actually did is make them do what they want to do, but they think they're free because they're not doing what God wants them to do. So it's like God says, go left. And Satan says, you don't have to go left, go right. So from that standpoint, it looks like you're free. Because you're just disobeying God. It has an idea that you're doing what you want to. But you're actually doing what Satan wants you to do. But it's just, he's making it subtle. It appears like you're free, but you're actually in bondage. Are you seeing what it is? And so, and so man is now ruled by Satan and Satan begins to rule the world. Because remember, he's, he told God gave authority over the entire earth to mankind. But mankind gave that authority to Satan. How? Because... Um, Mankind submitted that authority to Satan when they began to obey him. Because the Bible says you are servants to whom you yield yourselves to obey. You become a servant to whoever you obey. When they obeyed Satan by eating that fruit, mankind became Satan's servant. Right? See, mankind became Satan's servant. Mankind became Satan's servant. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and 4. He says, among them, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. You see, so this, the Bible is calling Satan the God of this world. The word God means ruler. So Satan now rules this world. Why? Because the rulership given to men, mankind obeyed Satan and Satan took that rulership. So just to recap, uh, so man was created to be the image and likeness of God, was created to be a representative and a manager um, and 
to be subject to his pattern because to be ambassadors again like i reiterated it before they have to be subject to his pattern to look like him to behave like him they have to do things the way he says they should be done you see and so those uh plans failed when they obeyed satan by eating the fruit uh that god told them not to eat when they obeyed satan satan took over and began to rule mankind and rule the earth that mankind was supposed to rule and and so uh that's the foundation this is part one of this teaching i'm going to do part two where i'll begin to discuss uh the assignment of the christ because what christ came to do has a lot to do with what mankind failed to do failed to be ambassadors and failed to be uh, governors uh, so is the the assignment of jesus christ has a lot to do with what adam failed to do and jesus christ came to, back to bring a lot of these things uh, back to fruition and so again mankind was created to be ambassadors and be representatives and 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 manage all that god has created and and those plans failed um so in part two i'm going to discuss the assignment of the christ um if anyone wants to give their life to christ uh, say these words with me, Father, I thank you for sending your son to die and raising for my glory. I receive him and I receive his life in Jesus' name. Amen.